Hello and welcome everyone to Legends of Runeterra. This is the new card game made by Riot Games. And I thought I'd make a video for you guys to learn how to play the game. A good how-to. Now, granted this is an early patch. The game will be released uh, next year, early 2020. But in the meantime, I was able to get a, my hands on an early copy of it. So then that way we can kind of run through how it's played. So by the time it does come out, you guys would be a lot wiser as far as how to play the game. So what I'll do is go into the actual game. I'll just pick a random deck and play against the computer. And we'll kind of go into how the game is played. Now the game itself, it looks very intimidating, but it's actually fairly easy. All right, so here you have the game board. Uh, you start off with, of course, the Melgan phase. Um, let's see here. All right, so let's break down the board and how it all looks. First off, you have the attacking phase and you have a defending phase. Now this swaps as each round goes on. First start off with one mana and as each round goes on you kind of grow up to 10. You have uh, what these th these three are called spell mana. So any mana I don't use in a given round converts to spell mana. So my spells can actually use the spell mana first before actually using my regular mana. So in essence if everything is full uh, full then I could have the 10 mana plus the extra three so 13 mana to use towards spells now you have your deck your deck has up to 40 cards and you have your nexus your nexus is basically your life total it uh, goes down you lose you bring the components down you win uh, you have these little creatures on the side you can play with They're really cute fun to do can't do anything with the enemies all right, so let's get things started. So starting off, I'm an attack on the first person. What you do is you have your hand here. Your opponent can't see your hand, but you play with the mana to bring them down to this lower board here. So for example, this Omen Hawk that I'm about to play, when summoned, grant the top two allies in your deck plus one, plus one. So we're gonna play that. And so it's going to make like the top two cards on my deck plus one plus one. All right. So what is happening here is we're going back and forth until someone doesn't do anything or attacks. The little sword here shows that I can attack. Uh, once you've used that, you then, of course, can pass it to the next person. So here, I don't have any more mana, so I can't play anything else. I have my card down here. So this is a one mana, and the yellow is the attack, and the red is this health. So what I'm doing here is I bring it to the lower board in order to attack. Now, my opponent played a uh, one mana 2-1 uh, card that has Challenger. Now Challenger, there's a lot of different techs and stuff, but Challenger, I can choose or they can choose which enemy unit to bo that blocks them. So this only comes into play during attack phase when the opponent has his own attack phase. So here's my attack. So he has a choice, either defend my bird with his bird and they'll kill each other, or B, he plays nothing and I do one attack to his nexus. Now, the cool thing is this game also has what is called the Oracle. And the Oracle here will kind of show you what is going to happen as the game develops or in that round. So let's see what he's going to do. I'm going to declare my attack. Okay, he is going to block. And they knock each other out. Super simple. Alright, so everything swapped over, and now it's his turn. Don't Attack phase and defense phase. Alright, so this time we have two mana. And for two mana, I don't have anything other than a spell and uh, a minion. So, can't do the spell, so I have no choice but to play the minion. All right. 
doubt. So in this game, there, uh, as far as the rarity core of cards, you have the uh, regular kind of rarity. This time it's green, purple, and instead of legendaries cards, they're going to have champions. So champions are powerful. Um, I don't know people that came from the actual game itself. In this case, he played Lucian. Lucian is a champion. So, champions have the ability to level up. So Lucian, he has what is called quick attack. Uh, what happens is whenever he attacks, he can attack something without taking damage from it. So in this case, all right, for him to level up, he has to see four allies or Santa, Cena, Sentinel of Light die. So once that happens, he levels up to this bigger one. He gets double attack, and the first time an ally dies each round, you ready your attack again. So, and the, with champions, you can play up to three of the same ones, or a total of six in your deck. Your deck has a total of 40 cards. So, if you, for example, have in your hand uh, one of the Lucians, and say you draw another one, that other one will turn into a spell. So then that way you can um, use it without actually using, you know, having your hand full of just champions. That would be useless. And this is what the Sienna card looks like, which more than likely is gonna be in this deck. All right, so what's gonna happen here is if I were to block, then you can actually see over here in the Oracle what's gonna happen. He's going to end up killing my bird, but he's not going to take any damage himself because he's using Quick Attack. Quick Attack, like I said, he attacks before the damage comes into play. So, I can either A, block it, and my creature dies, but I don't take the 3 damage, or B, take the 3 damage and at least have a 2-2 on the board. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let him do the 3 damage to me. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'm going to skip the block. And then as I pass, and it comes right back to my turn. And we're at three mana. Now, because I had one unspent mana, then that one mana converted into spell mana. So now, technically, I have a total of four mana for spells. But I have three mana for minions or anything that I uh, throw down. So... In this case, I have two options. I can either A, throw down my uh, champion myself, Braum. He has, doo -doo -doo. he has Challenger, which Challenger is when you attack, you can pull something down and confirm that you want to attack that one. And he also has Regeneration. So basically he f heals every time around uh, passes. So it passes up to the opponent. His level up is he survived 10 total damage. And um, when he levels up, he gets he changes from a 0 05 to a 0 07. And then whenever he actually survives any type of damage, he'll summon a Mighty Pora. Mighty Pora is this: 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three, overwhelm. Overwhelm is basically whenever you attack and you kill something, any leftover uh, attack will go to the enemy nexus. So, the solution. There's really no good way for me to kill it other than for me to throw something down and the opponent uses it to block. For example, if I were to attack right here and then he came in and blocked my two damage with the Lucian, then he would die. So what I'm going to do is... I'll go ahead and do the Braum. My other other choice is to use single combat. So this spell is what is called a fast spell. There are three different types. There's fast, burst, and slow. Burst spells are basically instantaneous. Fast spells are basically kind of a step above that. And then you have slow spells. So slow spells basically you can't play during the middle of combat, but fast spells you can. All right. So I could kill the solution really quickly by using the single combat. But what I, I'll save that for my next turn. What I'll do is I'll bring down the Braum. All right. So, Scribe of Sorrows, when I'm summoning, create a copy in hand of an ally that died this game. 
and nothing died, so I don't, uh, I'm not sure what he basically brought in. But, oh yeah, the bird. I forgot. I did kill that one bird. Alright. So what we're going to do I feel this my soul. is now because of the challenge attack, I can pull one of his units to attack this one. So in this case, I'm going to bring down him. Fun, yes? And the reason why I want this to be attacked is because I want Braum to level up. So he has to survive 10 damage. So this will be 3. So it kind of, if you, for example, didn't know what the result will be, you can always press an oracle, and it'll kind of tell you what, how it's going to look like. All right, we'll declare our attack. You took three. It is easy, see? And heals back up because of regeneration. They're as good as dead. You're adorable when you're angry. Different cards have different uh, talking points with each other because of different things. So, of course, this one is Sienna, and they both have little talking features. So, if I kill Sienna, he instantly uh, levels up, or if he sees more allies uh, dying, he'll level up. So, now that he's played a card, it's my turn. Basically, it goes back and forth. So, either I would play a card, and after I play a card, it'll be back to his turn. Uh, in, in order, order to, to declare an attack, attack or whatever he would, would like to do. So, what, what I would want to do is, I don't like this solution. I don't need it to level up as a champion. You can kind of see with the champion emblem here. Um, Sienna, first time an ally Lucian dies this game, grant me plus one, plus one, and double attack. So, this is where it's showing what a Lucian is. To kind of give you an idea of the way things go. These quick attack minions are kind of powerful, I guess you could say, because normally whenever you block, you take the damage of whatever you're attacking. The quick attack, they ignore that. So what I want to do is I need a way to kill the Lucian without worrying about his quick attack. So I'm going to use my spell. I'll pick an ally, and I'll pick an enemy. Basically saying I want these two to attack each other right this moment. And with uh, his quick attack won't come into play if that happens. So now I'm going to click OK, but it goes back, it falls back to the um, opponent. He might be have a spell that actually will bump this up or do something that cancels this out. I don't know. We're about to find out. But regardless, I can click Oracle and it'll tell me exactly how things are going to be determined. I really like this Oracle because it's different than other uh, card games kind of giving you the results of things just so you can make sure if that is what you want to do. As you can see, because of the spell, I'm using one of my spell mana and then two of, uh, I'm sorry, one of my spell mana and one of the actual regular mana. So then that I would have three left over. No, listen. All right. So that got resolved. Lucian was defeated. But because of it, she buffs up. Plus one, plus one. And the fact of the bird that came back. So I have three mana. I can, uh, after he played a card, I can go back and play another card if I have the mana too. Approaching the battlefront. Go ahead. All right, so here he's uh, declaring his attack. So it falls back on me. Okay, what do I want to do about this? How do I want to block this? All right, so he is, she is uh, what is called double attack. So she's gonna attack twice. If I did nothing, you can kind of go to the Oracle and see that I will lose 14 health because 10 from here and then two plus two. So, the problem is, now this girl has double uh, attack, she's a lot stronger. And you can kind of see where the lights have turned orange instead of yellow, oh, I'm sorry, yellow blue that it was before. So, I do want to block this. What I can do is, this many that I just played is a 2 mana 3-3 three, three with tough. So tough means they take one less damage from all sources. You can kind of see how on the health it has this yellowish armor looking thing. That can kind of give you a display of, okay, this character is tough, along with the little emblem on the bottom of the card. 
So, for example, if I was to block this one, instead of two attack, I'm oh, sorry, two damage, I would only take one because of the fact I have top, as you can see. If I was to block this one, I would still, uh, this one would die because of the quick attack, but I would only lose four from these two. So I've taken 10 this early in the game, I definitely don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is play, I will block that, and then I will also block Help is underway. one of these, so then that way he does take some damage and gets closer to leveling up. Now this bird has challenger, it could have pulled one of my minions to block it, but the computer opponent decided not to do that, so now I can dictate how I want my minions to block. All right, so we're gonna click on, uh, go ahead and block that. I gladly serve. It is easy, see? All right, now it falls back to my turn. All right. So we're gonna play it, Ash. Ash, tell me a story. Let me tell you about Avarosa. Alright, so Ash is a champion as well. So Ash is a 4 mana 5-3. When she attacks, she frostbites the enemy. So frostbite... I'm sorry, frostbite the strongest enemy. So frostbite is when a unit's power or their attack gets down to zero this round. And uh, basically after the round, it'll go back to normal. The strongest enemy, as it says, it goes by its highest power, so the highest attack. Then if it's a tie, it goes by the highest health. And if it's still a tie, then it goes by the highest cost. She levels up when you frost, uh, frostbite five plus enemies. So we're zero out of five. Then she'll, uh, then she'll create a crystal arrow the next round. And of course, she'll transform into the better card. All right. So... Right now, I could pass and do nothing and go back to their turn. But right now, I do want to declare an attack because by declaring an attack, this will go down to zero. Agarosans, stand together. Let's go, our friends, the door. All right. So I do want to take some damage for this guy. So I'll just pull Good luck. one of these. Actually... I could pull down this bird. Have you met my shield? And buff him by using my. So, this spell right here is a burst spell. So, it instantly happens. The opponent can't do anything about it. So, I can give an ally plus, plus, plus one this round. And it's one mana, so it's going to use my one spell uh, mana. By buffing this to 1-6, I'll be able to defeat this, and I don't have to worry about it's challenging for the future. Alright, so declare attack, and he has a chance to have something come down here and block this. Okay, so he chose to not do anything there. Lady Elise? Where are you? Virtue guides me. All right, so as you can see, the max to this lower column and on the field is six. So he is at his max of six uh, characters on the board there, so he can't do any more. So now he's that he's played a character, I can go back and play someone as well. So I'll play this Who one. Don't know the name, you will be scoured from this land. <laughs> Alright, so as the challenger bird, he decided to pull the ash, so now I can't block anyone else with ash. So as you can see, if we were to do nothing, I would die. Because of the negative 20. So, I do have to block this. So what we're gonna do is I gotta block her double attack. Close my eyes, make it fair. 
So then that way at least we'll uh, only take 10 damage. And with Braum, Braum needs 3 damage. So... The problem is I can block Braum on this you one. But as you can see, Braum would die. And I don't want my Braum di to die, I want him to be stronger. So, I will that block one of these. Underway. And I'll take 8 damage, unfortunately. So here's an example of what uh, her uh, Frostborn, uh, as you can see, there's two minions with five attack. So since it's a tie, it reverts to the health. This one having five health, she will frost end up frostbiting the 5-5 uh, the five five instead of the 5-3. Alright, so. I have seven mana, three spell. So as you can see, I can't play my Trinomere because... The three mana is only spell mana and not regular mana. So what we'll do is play a champion myself. The shield of our people, and you are their future. All right. So during my attack phase, we're gonna after I just played everything, I'm gonna attack. Let's soar. My sword. All right, so with this Braum, I'm going to pull. He only needs one damage to block before he levels up. So it doesn't matter who I pull. Show me your best. All right. I think that will work. Let's go. Not so fast. A world in perfect stillness. <laughs> Fight on. Beautiful the trunk. Alright, so what has happened there is two of my characters leveled up. Braum leveled up, so now whenever he, he takes damage and he lives, he'll summon a Mighty Pora. And my Anivia leveled up because once it dies, so Anivia can't block. So right now in the blocking phase when this opponent is about to attack me, she can't block anything that's about to come in. I can't use her as a block. But when I played her, she has an attack. Before she attacks, she deals one to all enemies. And whenever she dies, you she turns into this egg here. But she levels up when I start around. She goes into her leveled up phase. So now whenever she attacks, she does two. And if she dies again, she goes back to the egg and so on and so forth. So she doesn't ever really die, quote unquote, unless you kill her in her egg phase. Now... What we have going on here is the fact that the opponent used their stronger uh, Sienna to block my Ash. And you can also look at the history over here on the side. Oh, I'm sorry, she used it to block my Nivea, but Nivea, of course, comes back to life. So that actually helped me out. So the one with double attack went away. So here, they're playing a card, Haunted Relic. They summon three Unleashed Spirits. So of they have a board of five, so only they get one spirit. Which you can see here in Oracle, it'll show it is a 1-1 one, one uh, ephemeral creature, which is basically they die at the end of the turn, or end of the round, I should say. So, I only have seven health, and technically I could turn this around uh, if I 
had a little bit more time, but right now the opponent is playing a spell and it, the game is going like, okay, this person's playing a spell. You need to respond to it. So because I have a spell, it's pausing to give me the chance to use it. Otherwise, if I didn't, it would just automatically cast. So as you can see, if I use this spell, it uses two of my spell mana. Um, what I want is the fact that these higher minions, especially with the uh, attack here, have these two uh, attack in some way. So, if I were to use Anivia, so Anivia cannot attack or can't block, so she's useless on this turn anyway. So what I could do is have the 5-4 attack this 5-4. So I will do that, so then that way it at least saves me some damage. Nivia. And that one. So mine will actually go first before theirs. Now doing this, they will get an additional 1-1 uh, one, one creature, but I'd rather have the 1-1 one, one versus the 5-4. Alright, so we're going to go. She's back an egg. And now I can play one of my creatures. So let's play Trinomir. Smell a fight! Mr. Chance to run. Alright, did nothing, I would lose. So, Trinomir, he's also a champion. He has what is called overwhelm, like I said before. Whenever he attacks, he does damage over that. We'll go to the Nexus. And if he would die, he levels up instead. So he doesn't actually die. He goes into the better phase and he becomes a 9-9. Nine nine. So what, what I'm, I'm going to do is the fact I'll do this so he, he will end up dying. And let's see here. So I do want to block. So I, it doesn't really matter. You are safe with Brawl. And as you can see, I'll just take five damage instead, which will be two here and these three. So now, they, they only have three, three creatures. creatures, and I have two here, so I'm going to start off by summoning one. Oops. Approaching the battlefront. All right, their chance to play something. All right, they killed one of theirs. So I can play this one so that... And because I played another one, they get a chance to play another card. They decide not to. So, order does matter in this game. So, for example, uh, kind of a cool thing, instead of me just pulling creatures one at another over here, I can take it and kind of hover over each one and play them all at the same time. So, how we're going to do this. So, if, of course, he doesn't block or doesn't use any spells, he's going to be super dead. But, what I'm going to do is, this creature, of course, is going to do two damage to all, uh, all the enemies. So, I want it to go first. This one, because it has toughness, even though it does two, is going to live with one health. So, I will do it. Here and these will die. And while it attacks, it would give me another portal because my board is full. I don't get that. So let us attack. See what he does. Alright, play the spell. Alright, so that probably 
was a little Sentinels of light don't fear the dark. So, so I'm sure that was a little fast for you guys, but the way it worked is the fact that he killed one of my other enemies. Now, the problem is if you have a blocker and they die, just because they uh, declared their block, even though they they did die in the middle of that combat, they will still block the actual damage of whatever was coming in. So that opponent did not die because he actually laid down some minions to block even though they did die in the middle of combat. Which is fine, just delays his death one more turn. Alright, so what we have going on here is the fact that they didn't play uh, Senna, so right now they just played the Defender. Now I can play any one of my Defenders and it automatically it would, would die. But just to be on the safe side, I do want to play not the best you got. My bigger guy, just in case they do have a spell. For example, if I play this one, they have a spell to kill it. Even though I declared a block and I won't take damage, I want to make sure. All right, so we are to block. And as you can see, whenever you're blocking, you can't play any more minions more than whatever they are blocking with. You kind of get a message, as you can see here. So your goal on your blocking phase is to block the damage, while the goal on the attacking phase is to attack as much as possible. Now my enemy has one health, so this bird would automatically kill it by doing its uh, ability and taking care of it that way. So we're going to declare a block. And another thing is you can actually uh, deploy minions after the attack phase. It doesn't automatically end. After the attack phase uh, or the block phase, you can, if you have the mana, drop stuff down. And your opponent, if they also have mana or spells, they can actually have actions. So attacking doesn't actually end the attack phase. All right, let's finish this up. So my opponent only has one minion here to block with and I have several so we're gonna scoop them all up bring the storm. and just to be on the safe side I'm gonna pull it here oh and just in case you're asking the this scary face here is what is called fearsome they can only be blocked by enemies with three or more attacks so any of the low ones one attack zero attack two attack they can't be used to block this this guy which can come in handy all right, so let's declare our block. Oh, sorry, our attack, and let's win it. Fight on! And that's all she wrote. That's basically how you play the game. Now, this of course is in the simplest of terms. You get a little bit of experience uh, from your battle, even against the computer. Of course, it's not going to be as much as if you played against an actual human. And you have different quests and stuff that you could complete to get more experience. Getting more experience unlocks more uh, attributes. End of the week, you'll be able to get a vault. So, of course, you want to level this up to get better uh, chests. And uh, you actually have different cards that you can unlock. So let me show you that real quick. So there are different regions and different car types. So the different regions, you have the Masia, Frail George, Ionia, Noxus, Piltover, and Zon, and Shadow Isles. So you can change what your focus is. And of course, whatever you focus on, you'll kind of get cards from that area. So right now, for example, I clicked on Shadow Isles. And as I level up, I'll start unlocking some of these and getting more and more cards from that area. You can change any time. You don't have to be on just one. The choice is yours. So that is basically it as far as the basics of basics for, uh, for this game. But hey, it's a great game. When it comes out, it's going to be even better. There's even more different things you can do, different types of abilities that different cards have and the level up feature is actually pretty fun to look at but 
Hope this uh, video helps so you guys get the basic of basic things as far as how the game is played. But as uh, it gets developed and more things come out, we'll be able to see more and more attributes of it. You guys take care of yourselves. Hope this helped. And you have a great day. And as always, delve deeper in any game you play. You have more fun. You take care. Bye-bye.